Right and left are useful, but they depend on which way you're facing. So I'm going to talk about two other methods that you can use to help direction finding. Hello and welcome to this second video in the Beginner's Navigation Skills course. My name is Chris Terrell and in this video I'm going to show you some tips to help you with your general orientation and direction finding. There's also a free downloadable resource which I'll talk about later on. If you watched the previous video, the first one in the series, I talked about waypoints. Fix things that you're going to find on your way to your destination and it will help you find your way there. By landmarks I mean fixed points that are easy to identify from a distance and from any angle but that we're not actually going to meet up with on the journey. So if we're going to use waypoints and landmarks then we just need to look around us for clues. Well here I can see the hill of Damayat on the edge of the Ochil Hills that's up behind the town of Aloha and then to the further left is Stirling Castle and in the far distance we've got the mountains of Ben Vorlich and Stuka Hroin and then closer to us we've got these big power lines going across the river. So all of these things are clues that I can use to help work out if I'm going in the right direction and also which way I'm looking. If you're in a city like Paris for example you've got big landmarks like the Eiffel Tower which is visible from quite a distance and you can even see it from street level in between quite a lot of buildings. If you think about your own towns and cities then I'm sure you can think of examples for yourself that you could use. So these can help you orient yourself in an area as long as you can see the landmark and you can relate the landmarks to your journey with these questions. Do I need to go towards or away from it? Should I keep it on my right or on my left for this part of the journey? Now if you're going far you're going to need a series of different landmarks along with your waypoints of course because as you travel along your, your position relative to the landmarks is going to change depending how far away they are. So this is something to think about when you're planning your journey. You can use this approach indoors as well using waypoints or features you can see around you to help with the orientation especially in places like big shopping malls, airports, railway stations, those big multi-story car parks. I personally find the big indoor shopping malls and some of the big car parks quite challenging to find my way around because somehow losing the sky really messes up my sense of where I am. So this is an approach that I use a lot myself. If you're not sure you can remember them you could always use your phone to record a voice memo as if you're making a phone call so nobody's going to realize you're doing this. Give it a try let me know how it goes. Right and left are useful but they depend on which way you're facing and some people get them mixed up anyway. We're going to look at the cardinal directions now north, south, east and west because these are fixed. So how do you work out these directions without some equipment like a compass? Well, the easiest thing is usually to find north or south. Now I'm just going to give you one method which is good enough for the stage we're at just now. You just need to know what time it is to the nearest hour is okay and you need to be able to see the sun well enough to tell where it is in the sky. So the sun rises in the east here and in this early part of the morning the sun is going to be in the eastern quarter of the sky up until about nine o'clock. So at that time if the sun is shining on the left hand side of my face then I'm looking roughly south. From about nine o'clock till about three o'clock or 1500 then the sun's in the southern quarter of the sky and it's actually due south at about 12 o'clock or 1300 if you're on British summer time, daylight saving. After about three o'clock the sun goes into the western quarter of the sky until around about sunset. So at that time of day if the sun is shining on the right hand side of my face then again I'm looking roughly south. If you're in the tropics where the sun gets very high overhead or in the southern hemisphere I put information in the description below and in the notes that go with the free download about how to make this work for those locations. Now to find south a little more accurately I've put together this little tool which is available as a free download, the links in the description, and you can print it off and use it for yourself and it's got instructions as well. I'm using it here with a magnetic compass in the shot just to prove that it works and we'll look at compasses in the next module but as you can see here the white end of the compass needle is pointing in the same direction as the arrow on the little diagram 
that indicates where south is. OK, so we've looked at a couple of methods for working out what direction you're looking in without any other tools apart from a combination of waypoints and landmarks, knowing the time of day, and looking at the position of the sun to work out north, south, east and west. I'd urge you to practice using these skills. Like any skill, the more you practice it, the more results you get. Let me know in the comments below how you get on with this. I'd be really interested to know any questions that you have and any suggestions that you have for other methods that you might use. Next, we're going to look at maps, along with how to apply what you've learned so far to any map to help you relate what you see on the map to what you can see around you, and also to find out which way you need to go. So, watch this video next, and I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.